I'm seen here with Josh Hagler, artist, who's doing his big opening exhibition at the Frey Norris Gallery here in San Francisco. And he's showing a number of paintings and two installations. And we're just here to have a conversation with him so that you can get a look at the artist and his work. So, Josh, I'm going to ask you the hardest and easiest question of the entire interview. Mm -hmm. Why art? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you start doing art? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, I guess as a kid, you can't really, you don't really have an answer to that question. You just, you know, spend your time, whatever you're going to spend your time doing as a kid. And uh, um, so I don't know if that's something that's really an active decision that you make at a certain point. It's just something that you develop over time. And at some point, then people start calling you an artist and you just go with it, I suppose. So 72 Virgins to Die For, the yeah. exhibit. Yeah. Why the name? Yeah. Um, good question. <laughs> uh, well, it's kind of a double meaning. Um, the 72 virgins uh, comes from uh, the hadith, which is a, basically talking about a reward or a paradise. Um, to die for as itself a double meaning, so literally you're, you're uh, addressing violence, but also sexuality, I think. Um, my titles tend to be taken more from a, um, a literary sensibility than maybe what you'd see as like a traditional title of a painting. Most artists feel like they have um a set of conflicts that drive their work, hmm. right? I mean, there has to be some something to rail against for the dialogue. Hmm. Do you have any conflicts you feel like that drive your work as a whole, as you as a person? Or do you feel like it is more of an exploration? Um, I think it's both at the same time. I think that it's rooted in conflict, and I do that consciously because I think that's basically where we derive our purpose and our meaning, that we need some kind of conflict in order to even form a kind of belief that is in any way important to ourselves. It's almost as if you need the non-believer in order to believe. So whatever somebody else believes in opposition, I think, and you can see this culturally, but you can also see this in individuals, that reaffirms your own beliefs that much stronger. So there's always this, this conflict that I, that I purposely like to put my, my work in the middle of. Tell me about your personal exploration and, and how your past affects that, like, just like you were saying. Right. Um, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with um, a lot of probably disillusionment that I would have faced around the time I was 20, 21, um, about uh, sort of what I felt was expected from me as a born-again Christian at the time. And um, uh, there was a lot of, I think, conflict in a way between um, my sense of self, my individuality, and submission in some sense. And um, that basic... I think emotional quality that grew out of that is what permeates the work. Could you tell us about this work behind you? The title and what it's about? This is called Golgotha, which is um, another name for Calvary, which is um, where uh, Christ was um, supposed to have been crucified. Um, and so I wanted to... Uh, the, the, the head of the figure here comes from a balu turf. It's a, you know, it's a delicacy that's, that's eaten. Um, all of the napkins that are on the heads of the crowd here is taken from the idea of how ortolan is eaten, which is a French delicacy as well. And so I see this, um, the Christ as um, a virgin figure um, to be eaten, which is something that happens in communion. But also I see all of the followers as virgins, people who, for whatever reason, various cultures come to uh, have a common agreement on um, what the truth is. And um, at that point, in my opinion, become somewhat intellectually malleable. What made you create this body of work and why this work? I think it, it's, it's an interesting um, dichotomy between the onus that uh, somebody who is exclusive to a particular religion will put on themselves and how they take responsibility for themselves and generally, like anybody else, uh, want virtuous things in their lives and other lives. Um, you know, they, they want to be happy, they want the world to be a good place to live, they want peace and all, all that. Um, and at the same time, um, there's so much violence around religion, which isn't to say that, uh, uh, in, at least in my opinion, that 
violence is, um, exists because of religion. I think it exists just fine with or without it. But uh, <clears throat> I was interested in how uh, um, so many people so interested in, in purity and good works and um, um, just living kindly can also be a part of something that can also act in a completely opposite opposite way type of a how do you feel your work has evolved from the last few years from this you know from maybe four or five years ago to this exhibition how do you feel you've grown or evolved what what process led up to this um artistically yeah i mean i think in terms of both technique and concept the work has developed a bit more just being able to figure out uh, sp more specifically not even really so much what I want to say, but what I want to explore, mm -hmm. you know? I think in the end, it's like if you have one specific thing that you're, that you're saying, then you might as well just you know, say it and get on with it and move on to something else. And so for, uh, maybe, maybe how it's developed is I've maybe become a bit more obsessive in some of the subject matter I've been dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just the act of discovery during the time that I'm making it. And I don't mm -hmm. worry about so much like one concrete thing that I yeah. particularly want to say or... <laughs> I'm sitting here with Raman Frey, the co-owner of the Frey Norris Gallery. And the simplest question is, you chose Josh as the artist, so what drove you to that decision, or how do you choose artists, and why Josh? Um, I do get asked it a lot by a lot of different people, and uh, one of the things that makes our jobs so interesting is that our approach to uh, finding artists is in no way formulaic. Uh, we really have to keep our wits about us, we have to pay attention to uh, quite a different, quite a few different possibilities, and <clears throat> frankly, we get referrals from friends. Now, not everyone's opinion is weighed equally. We have friends who are very knowledgeable about art, curators, other arts professionals, other artists, and um, a few of those people we really respect their opinion. So, when they recommend someone, we take it quite seriously. We have a, a, a real look at that artist. So um, I, I have to give kudos to Meg Schiffler. Uh, Meg is the director of the San Francisco Arts Commission Gallery and a friend of ours. And she's very familiar with our program and our interests and preferences. And she recommended Josh's work to me a while ago. This is my installation, Love is a Fire. I made it um, after I had uh, watched the, the breaking up of the polygamous ranches in, in Texas. And um, I had uh, bought this uh, pioneer dress that are worn by the polygamists even now um, to use in some paintings, but I decided that I wanted to actually use it three-dimensionally. And um, I had also been thinking and reading about um, the significance of moths in Sufic tradition. And um, the idea being that in order to have uh, kind of absolution or communion with God, to really know God, you, the, the moth flies into the flame, which is to say that the moth gives up the body, it destroys itself in the flame in order to become one with God. And, and so um, that's where this installation comes from. This is my painting that I painted after the uh, Armada portrait of uh, Queen Elizabeth, originally painted by George Gower in the uh, 1500s. And um, since that time, it's been painted many times um, as a sort of patriotic painting in England. Um, I use it for my purposes to uh, epitomize both uh, imperialistic power and um, trying to aspire toward a certain kind of virtue. So she uh, represents both the, the virgin and the imperialistic power. So in that way, I could have the entire uh, power struggle sort of encompassed inside of, of one portrait. She's got her fingers pointed on the globe, which would have um, originally been uh, in reference to the conflict between Spain and, uh, and England, but I reorganized it to make it Pangaea, which was a supercontinent before continental drift uh, made the continents look how they are today to sort of signify the, the timelessness of this uh, back and forth battle.